My name is Alex, and if someone had told me that an ordinary visit to a car dealership could turn my life upside down, I would have laughed in their face. But that's exactly what happened. My wife Jessica was always up to her ears in work when her mother, Ellen, decided it was time to upgrade her old car. Jessica, barely able to breathe between meetings and deadlines, simply couldn't find the time to help her mother. And then, like a true knight in shining armor, although more like a battered sedan, I offered my services. Don't think I'm that much of an altruist. I just always enjoyed spending time with Ellen. She was witty, an interesting conversationalist, and to be honest, a very attractive woman. So the prospect of spending a few days driving around car dealerships with her seemed like a great idea. You know, combining business with pleasure. The first day went like clockwork. We visited a couple of dealerships, sat in a dozen cars, argued about the merits of leather and fabric interiors. I was for leather, Ellen for fabric, because, as she put it, leather sticks to your ass in the summer. We even managed to break away for a test drive, and I was surprised to find that Ellen drove like a real racer. This woman never ceased to amaze me. In between, we talked a lot. Ellen told me about her youth, her travels, her late husband. I, in turn, shared my thoughts on work, family, and life in general. And the more we talked, the more I realized that I really enjoyed spending time with her. She wasn't just my wife's mother. She was an amazing person with whom I could talk about anything in the world. So the first day flew by, and then the second, and the third. Our trips to car dealerships became regular, and each time I eagerly awaited the moment when I could be with Ellen again. We laughed, argued, discussed cars and life, and with each passing day, I felt a special bond growing between us that was hard to put into words. It was more than friendship, but I tried not to think about it too much. After all, she was my wife's mother, and I didn't want to jump to conclusions. But, as it turned out, life loves to throw surprises. And one of those surprises was waiting for me at the end of the week when Ellen and I decided to wrap up our search at a cozy cafe over a cup of coffee. It was there, at a table by the window, looking into her laughing eyes, that I suddenly realized I was falling in love. Falling in love with the woman I least expected to love. And this discovery both frightened and excited me because I had no idea where it would lead. That day at the cafe, we sat for several hours, chatting about everything under the sun. From the outside, we probably looked like old friends catching up on lost time. But for me, it was something more. Ellen's every glance, every word, every chuckle. It all resonated in my soul, as if we were on the same wavelength. She told me how hard it had been for her after her husband's death, how lonely she felt, despite the love of her daughter and grandchildren, how sometimes at night she would lie awake, dreaming of having someone next to her who could hug her. I could see the pain in her eyes, and I wanted to do everything I could to make that pain go away. In turn, I shared with her my thoughts on my marriage to Jessica. Don't get me wrong, I love my wife, but sometimes it feels like we've become more roommates than spouses. We've gotten so bogged down in routine, in everyday problems, in work, that we've forgotten what it's like to be in love. I miss the days when my heart would beat faster at the mere sight of my loved one. And there, sitting across from Ellen, I suddenly realized that I was feeling that again. That excitement, that trepidation, that sense of something new and beautiful. Our eyes met, and in her eyes, I saw a reflection of my own feelings. At that moment, I knew that something special was happening between us. We sat in the cafe until closing time not noticing the time. And when we went outside, it turned out to be the middle of the night. I volunteered to walk Ellen home, and the whole way we walked in silence, as if afraid to break the spell of the moment. At her door, we stopped, not knowing what to say to each other. I looked into her eyes and saw the reflection of the starry sky, and then, obeying some impulse, I leaned in and kissed her. It was a gentle, almost weightless kiss, but it contained all the feelings that we both felt. When we pulled away from each other, I saw a smile on her face. And at that moment, I knew I was in trouble. Head over heels. From that day on, everything changed. Our trips to car dealerships were no longer just a search for a car, but a search for an opportunity to be alone together. We found secluded corners to steal kisses, held hands when no one was looking. 
We behaved like teenagers experiencing love for the first time. And it was both wonderful and frightening at the same time. I knew that what we were doing was wrong, that I was deceiving Jessica, that Ellen was deceiving her daughter, but I couldn't help myself. The feelings I had for Ellen were stronger than the arguments of reason. I wanted to be with her no matter what, but as we know, fate has its own sense of humor, and very soon we were about to see that for ourselves. It happened on one of the last days of our search. Ellen and I had just finished looking at another car and decided to take a little break in an empty parking lot behind the dealership. The sun was setting, painting the sky in incredible shades of pink and orange. We sat on the hood of the car, admiring the beauty. I don't know what came over me at that moment. Maybe it was the romance of the setting. Maybe it was how beautiful Ellen looked in the rays of the setting sun, but I suddenly felt an irresistible desire to kiss her. And not just kiss her, but really kiss her with all the passion I felt. I pulled her to me and pressed my lips to hers. She responded to the kiss with no less fervor, and we melted into an embrace, forgetting everything in the world. My hand slid over her body, her fingers buried in my hair. We kissed as if it was the last kiss of our lives. I don't know where it would have led if it hadn't been for a fluke. At some point, Ellen accidentally hit the horn with her hand, and the loud sound brought us out of our trance. We pulled away from each other, breathing heavily and looking into each other's eyes, and in those eyes, I saw a reflection of my own desire. Let's go to my place, Ellen suddenly said. Her voice sounded husky and seductive. I knew I should refuse. I knew that if we crossed that line, there would be no going back. But at that moment, all the arguments of reason paled before the force of my desire. I nodded, and we got into the car. The drive to her house seemed endless. We rode in silence, but the air in the car was literally crackling with tension. When we finally arrived, I felt like a taut string ready to snap at any moment. We entered the house, and as soon as the door closed behind us, all masks were dropped. We pounced on each other, tearing off clothes, kissing as if we wanted to drink each other dry. We made love right on the floor in the hallway, unable to make it to the bedroom. It was wild, passionate, almost primal. We gave ourselves to each other completely, forgetting about everything in the world. Then, as we lay on the rumpled sheets, trying to catch our breath, reality began to seep into our consciousness. We had crossed the line, and now we had to deal with the consequences. What have we done, Alex? Ellen whispered, pressing against me. I don't know, I answered honestly, but I don't regret it. And that was the truth. Despite all the doubts and fears, I didn't regret what had happened, because for the first time in a long time, I felt truly alive. The next morning, I woke up with a heavy heart. The events of the previous night swirled through my head, and I didn't know how to look Jessica in the eye now. I felt like the last scoundrel deceiving my wife, but at the same time, I couldn't deny my feelings for Ellen. We agreed that our night would remain a secret, that we would act as if nothing had happened, continuing our search for a car. But easier said than done. Every time I was near Ellen, I felt an irresistible desire to touch her, to kiss her, to repeat what had happened between us. And by her looks, I knew she felt the same way. Our trips to car dealerships became a real torture. We tried to keep our distance, but the attraction between us was too strong. Accidental touches, meaningful glances, ambiguous phrases, all of it only increased the tension. I was constantly afraid that someone would notice our chemistry, that Jessica or someone we knew would see the way we looked at each other and guess what was going on. That would be the end of everything. But despite the fear, we couldn't stay away from each other. Snatching moments secretly, we found opportunities to be alone. A quick kiss in a secluded corner of the dealership, an embrace in the back seat of a car. We grasped at every opportunity like a drowning man at a straw. And then the thing I feared most happened. Jessica began to suspect something. She started asking questions about my trips with Ellen, wondering what we were talking about, what we were doing. I answered evasively, trying not to betray my agitation, but inside I was trembling with fear. I knew it couldn't go on like this for long, that sooner or later our deception would be revealed and then everyone would suffer. But I didn't know how to get out of this situation without breaking either Jessica's or Ellen's heart. One evening, when I once again stayed out late, citing work, 
Jessica couldn't take it anymore. She gave me a real interrogation, demanding to know the truth, and I, exhausted by lies and guilt, gave in. I told her everything, about my feelings for Ellen, about what had happened between us. I expected shouting, tears, accusations, but Jessica just looked at me in silence, and in her eyes I saw pain and disappointment. How could you, Alex? She finally said. How could you do this to me, to our family? I didn't know what to say. All my excuses seemed pitiful and unconvincing. I had hurt the person most dear to me, and now I had to deal with the consequences. Jessica left, slamming the door, and I was left sitting in the dark feeling my life crumbling before my eyes. I knew I had to make a decision, but for the first time in my life, I didn't know what to do. The next day I met with Ellen and told her what had happened. She was as shocked as I was. We both realized that our relationship had gone too far and now it was time to pay the piper. I don't want to ruin your marriage, Alex, Ellen said, tears in her eyes. But I also can't deny how I feel about you. We sat in silence, not knowing what to do next. It seemed that any decision we made would hurt someone, but it couldn't go on like this. We needed to find a way out before it was too late. And then something unexpected happened. Something that fundamentally changed the whole situation and made us rethink our views on what was happening. The call came in the middle of the night. At first, I didn't understand what was going on, but when I picked up the phone and heard Jessica's voice, my heart sank. She was crying and speaking incoherently, but I got the gist. Ellen had had a heart attack and had been taken to the hospital. I jumped up and began to dress frantically, not feeling my feet under me. The whole way to the hospital, only one thought kept running through my head. Please let her be okay. I couldn't imagine my life without Ellen, couldn't allow myself to think that I might lose her. When I ran into the hospital, Jessica was already there. She was sitting in the hallway, hugging herself, looking so lost and miserable that my heart clenched. I walked over to her, not knowing what to say, but she spoke first. She was asking for you, Jessica said her voice breaking. Before losing consciousness, she was calling for you. I felt a lump rise in my throat, so Ellen had been thinking of me at that moment, so I had been that important to her. That thought both warmed and wounded me. The next few hours seemed like an eternity. Jessica and I sat in the hallway waiting for news from the doctors, and for the first time in a long time we really talked about us, about our marriage, about what had happened. Jessica admitted that she had long felt me drifting away from her, but had been afraid to admit it to herself. And I, in turn, told her about my doubts, about how I was weighed down by the routine and monotony of our lives. We talked about all this, and for the first time in many years, I felt that there were no understatements or secrets between us. We were honest with each other, and it was both painful and liberating. When the doctor finally came out to us, we jumped to our feet. He said that Ellen was stable but needed rest and care. And then Jessica said something I never expected to hear. I'll take care of her, she said firmly. She's my mother, and right now she needs my help. I looked at my wife and didn't recognize her. Where was the fragile, vulnerable woman she had been just a few hours ago? Now before me stood a strong, determined Jessica, ready to do anything for her family. And at that moment, I realized that I loved her, really loved her with all my heart. And no matter what had happened in the past, no matter what mistakes we had made, we could overcome anything together. But to do that, we had to make one more important decision, a decision that would change our lives forever. The next day, Jessica and I went to the hospital together. We needed to talk to Ellen to dot all the I's. I was afraid of this conversation, but I knew it was necessary. When we entered the ward, Ellen was lying on the bed, pale and haggard. But at the sight of us, a spark lit up in her eyes. She tried to sit up, but Jessica gently stopped her. Lie down, Mom, she said. You need to conserve your strength. We sat down by the bed and for a while just sat in silence, not knowing where to begin. Jessica spoke first. Mom, she said, looking Ellen in the eye. I know what's going on between you and Alex. Ellen flinched and gave me a frightened look, but Jessica continued. I don't blame you. I understand that the spark has long been gone in our marriage and that you found in each other what you were missing. But I ask you to think about this. 
Is it worth all the suffering we will cause our loved ones? Is it worth destroying families for the sake of a fleeting passion? Her words were like a punch to the gut. I looked at Ellen and saw that she understood it too. We both realized that we had gone too far, that our feelings, however strong they might be, weren't worth the pain we were causing. You're right, Jessica, Ellen finally said. Alex and I allowed ourselves to get carried away without thinking about the consequences. But I don't want to ruin your family. You're my daughter, and your happiness is more important to me than anything in the world. She turned to me and I saw tears in her eyes. Forgive me, Alex, she whispered. I shouldn't have let it go this far, but I want you to know what was between us. It was real. I will never forget it. I squeezed her hand, feeling tears welling up in my throat. I loved her too, in my own way, but sincerely, and I knew that our feelings had been real, but now was not the time to discuss it. I will never forget it either, Ellen, I said, but right now the most important thing is your health. You need to get better, and Jessica and I will be here to help you with everything. And we really were there. For the next few weeks, Jessica and I took turns keeping vigil at Ellen's bedside, helping her recover from the attack. We talked a lot, about everything under the sun, avoiding only one topic. We were learning to be a family again. Gradually, life began to return to its usual course. Ellen was getting better, and Jessica and I were working on our relationship. It wasn't easy. There was too much that needed to be fixed, too much to forgive each other for. But we tried, day after day, rebuilding our marriage anew. As for that ill-fated car, in the end, Ellen never did buy a new one. She said that the old one suited her just fine, and that all the searching had just been an excuse to be close to me. That confession was not easy for her, but I was grateful for her honesty. Several months passed, and one day, we all gathered for a family dinner. Ellen, Jessica, me, and our children. Looking at those dear, smiling faces, I suddenly realized that I was happy, truly happy, in a way I hadn't been in a very long time. We had come a long and difficult way, full of mistakes and trials, but we had made it. We had managed to keep our family together without sacrificing our own feelings. And even if our relationship would never be the same, that was okay. The main thing was that we were honest with each other and loved each other, no matter what. Because true love is not passion or infatuation. It's daily work. It's the ability to forgive, to support, and to be there for each other in sorrow and in joy. And I know that together we can handle anything. After all, we are family. And that's what matters most. Weeks turned into months, and our lives slowly but surely returned to normal. Ellen made a full recovery and even started talking about finally buying that new car. Jessica and I continued to work on our marriage, learning to communicate openly and honestly with each other. It wasn't always easy, but we were determined to make it work. One evening, as we sat on the porch watching the sunset, Jessica turned to me with a serious expression on her face. Alex, she said, I want you to know that I forgive you for everything that happened with my mother. I know it wasn't easy for you, and I know you didn't mean to hurt me. I felt tears welling up in my eyes. Hearing those words from her meant more to me than I could express. Thank you, I managed to say. And I'm sorry, for everything. I love you, Jessica, more than anything in the world. She smiled and leaned her head on my shoulder. I love you too, she whispered, always and forever. We sat like that for a long time, just enjoying each other's presence. And I knew that no matter what challenges life might throw our way, we would face them together. As for Ellen and me, our relationship had changed, but not in a bad way. We were no longer lovers, but we had become true friends. We could talk to each other about anything, without fear or guilt, and I knew that she would always have a special place in my heart. In the end, I realized that love comes in many forms. It can be passionate and all-consuming, like what I had felt for Ellen, but it can also be quiet and steadfast, like the love I had rediscovered with Jessica. And both kinds of love have their place and their value. Looking back on that fateful summer, I can't say I regret what happened. It was a journey of self-discovery, a test of my character and my commitment. And though it was painful at times, it ultimately led me to a deeper understanding of myself and what really matters in life. So if there's a lesson to be learned from my story, perhaps it's this. Life is messy and complicated and love even more so. But if we face our challenges with honesty, courage, and compassion, 
we can come out the other side, stronger and wiser. And who knows? Maybe one day when I'm old and gray, I'll look back on this chapter of my life with a nostalgic smile. A secret summer, a forbidden love, a family tested and reaffirmed. It's the stuff of novels, isn't it? But for now, I'm content to live in the present, grateful for the love and the lessons I've received. And whatever the future may bring, I know I'll face it with an open heart and a clearer sense of what truly matters. Because in the end, that's all any of us can do. Did you like this story? Let us know in the comments what you liked. Subscribe to our storytelling podcast. Also, don't forget to like and ring the bell so you don't miss more interesting stories. See you soon.